In this video, we're going to create a chart in Excel that is controlled by a drop down selection menu. So, what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. I have a chart here of sales in blue versus expenses in orange. And I actually have three different types of expenses. And this drop down menu here controls them. So you can see I have cost of goods sold. If I select that, the chart updates automatically. I have marketing and admin expenses, and then I have an option for total expenses. So you can see total expenses. So the first thing we want to do is add our drop down selection list here in cell C1. So I'm going to click on that cell, go up to data. And then under this data validation drop down, I'm going to select the first option. I'm going to select list, click in the source input box, and then select the range that I want to use. It's this row of headers here for our different expenses. So we have that. And now what we need to do is create a dynamic formula here that will pull back whatever expense is selected in our drop down menu based on the headers here and also the labels in this column here so we want to find the intersection of whatever selected here and this lookup value here in this range of data so we're going to use the index and match function and a lot of people freak out about this they think it's so hard it's really quite simple and i'll show you how simple it is so we're going to start out by using the index just by itself so the first input is the array so we have our array of values here and then you give it a row number and a column number of the intersection of those two that you want to pull back. So if I wanted to pull back the first row and the first column, it's going to pull back exactly that. If I change this to the third column, it's going to pull back row one, column three. Easy enough. So rather than have fixed numbers for the last two inputs for the row and column, what we're going to use is the match function. And what the match function does is it returns the number position of a lookup value in an array. So let me show you how that works by itself. So like for our row input, we would use this instead of a hard number. So we have match, we have our lookup value. So if I wanted to look up the north branch in this first column here, that's my lookup array. And then the last input is the type of match we want. We want an exact match, so that's going to be 0. It's going to pull back the position of where that lookup value is located. So that would be our row input. And if we did a column input the same way, we could use it to return the column position. So if I was looking up in this array, admin expenses, and I'm going to change this array to our row of headers. It returns the position of where that's found in this row of headers. So now we're going to combine the index with the match for both the row and the column input. So our array is still going to be this range of values here. And we want to hit F4 to lock that down because we want that to stay fixed when we drag our formula down. So for our row input, we're going to insert the match function. Our lookup value is going to be this value here. Our lookup array is going to be this column here containing our labels. We want to hit F4 to lock that down so that that stays fixed. And we want an exact match. So that's our row input. Now we have our column input. So our lookup value this time is going to be our drop-down selection list. I 
want to hit F4 because we want this to stay fixed as we drag this down. Our lookup array is going to be our row of headers. And then we want an exact match here as well. And we need two closing parentheses here. So you can see that returns the position of cost of goods sold returns the value, I should say, for the cost of goods sold for the east branch. So if I change this to admin, it's going to return the east branch admin expenses. When I drag this down, it should work fine for all the other branches. So now we can insert our chart. So I'm going to select this data here, go to insert, I'm going to go over to charts, I'm going to select 3D column chart. I'm going to change the style here to something else and change the label here to sales versus expenses. And now when I select this, it's currently on admin expenses. If I change this to cost of goods sold, you can see it updates automatically. We can see the total expenses. So that's all there is to it. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.